So she called me, I was like, hey, this is the deal. They sent me the contract, I signed it. And I put my phone and I keep working out for like two more hours. And I was working out and all of a sudden things come out and then I find like five missed calls from him. <laughs> It was like, yo, so at least Brian told me that he was about to play in a team that I play. He was asking me, like, but you, I was expecting this from you, but I wasn't not expecting this from you. I could expect it for someone else, but not for you. How you didn't tell me? It was like, yo, I'm working out. It just happened. Like, literally, he just happened in 48 hours. Uh, hi, Jaime. Uh, welcome to Vilnius. Thank welcome you. to Ritas. Welcome to Lithuania. Uh, you've been here for a week already. A week. Uh, a week. So, uh, what are your first impressions about uh, the city, the team, and of course our our fans? Um, do you feel well in this in this place? <laughs> uh, I think uh, <clears throat> somebody asked me about the fans, and I will start with them. I had the experience of like going to a big college, uh, going to which to stay, uh, go Shockers. Um, it was an amazing experience because we have fans involved in the game so much that every night was a privilege to, to play in front of them. And the way that they get involved in the game, they support us, it, it, it was amazing. And now coming to Europe and coming to Ritas, it, it is amazing the feeling of the crowd, the music, and how intense, how they support you. Uh, the first game, uh, I was missing free throws. And usually you're a good free throw shooter. Exactly. I don't know what's happening. I'm trying to, like, I'm 80, 85%, but I don't know what was happening. I guess maybe the jet lag, maybe I was tired. Mm -hmm. It's so many factors that, you know, you get used to it. And then uh, I was missing free throws, and I was like, what is going on? And the, and the crowd was getting involved. They were getting excited. They were getting louder. And that, that's like a, like a beautiful thing that just gets you... Uh, a memory of your debut in, in, in Lithuania and in Europe, uh, unforgettable. So it was, a, it was an amazing experience that night. And then uh, coming to the city, it, it was amazing, it looks beautiful. I have the, uh, so far we have breaks and then I'm being slowly, I'm being, looking around the city, finding places, finding restaurants. The food is amazing so far. The people is really warm. And the team is amazing. I, mean, I, think, we, I think we're doing a great job so far. Uh, I think the team is pretty uh, focused on what's the, what's, what's the goal for this season. And for me, just getting used to it and following the lead and trying to give as much as I can out of me, out of my talent. And then uh, so far, they, they welcome me with open arms, which I appreciate because being a team who's been together for such a long period yeah. of time and you come the new guy, <clears throat> you cannot come to improvise things, you, you have to adapt yourself to what's going on and, and accept your role. And I think so far I've been doing good, uh, uh, adapting to my role and doing the things for the team to keep being su successful. You said that uh, Vilnius is beautiful for you, but you also come from a beautiful city, as far as I know, mm -hmm. uh, city of Bar Bar Barranquilla, Col Colombia. And uh, uh, as most of our viewers uh, have, haven't been there uh, and uh, probably will never visit mm -hmm. uh, because it's far away. Uh, so. Uh, What's the city like and how important is Shakira to the city? I'm just going to say this and I hope people understand. Uh, Colombia is not only about Pablo Escobar, it's, only about, it's not about drugs, yeah. it's not about conflict, it's not about violence anymore. So me moving to America, it was really important for me to show and make people understand that Colombia is a beautiful city that every person who get out of the comfort zone to experience new things falls in love with it. Uh, to the point of today, Colombia is a really safe country in many ways. Way, uh, I don't discriminate, I'm not trying to put Colombia above any other country. But the main comparison of Colombia, people compare it to Mexico. And if you see Mexico, Mexico is way more, uh, have more, way more conflict, way more internal fight that is happening in Colombia. Like, it, it, some people don't understand and they think it's still, Pablo Escobar is still a big thing. It's like, I'm, I'm trying to don't disrespect nobody, but Colo I always say Colombia is way more than on public square or pass. Colombia is a beautiful country that has amazing things to offer, and all the people, <coughs> sorry, all the people like I said before, who breaks out the comfort zone and go there, they fall in love. They fall in love with the culture. They fall in love with the food. They fall in love with the people, because we welcome everybody with open arms and we try to make them feel one of us. Even if we don't have it, we're gonna give the best out of, out of us. 
And if you ask anybody who experienced, who had the opportunity or the chance to travel to South America in general, they just fall in love with how welcome we are with every international person because we're trying to make the best, the situation the best out of it. So um, being from Barranquilla, being from the coast, it, it, it's an amazing. And yesterday I had a couple of friends in here that we have uh, friends in common. And I was telling them, like, I would not change my heritage for nothing because being Colombian, being Colombian as being part of any other country is a privilege. And the swing, the swag, the way I talk, all this kind of stuff, it makes me unique as a person and as a player. And I don't change that. And then being playing in front of, in different leagues, in, in the biggest leagues, and being able to, people understand that I'm from Colombia, that's a big thing for me, just to make them understand that Colombia is not based on, on a bad past. Colombia has many other th beautiful things to offer to, to people. And Shakira, of course. Uh, we kind of grew up in the same neighborhood, me and Shakira. Uh, so I have history of seeing her long when I was a little kid because when I had to go to my high school, her house was in the way. And I have a, a couple flashbacks. So we kind of grew up in the same area in Colombia. In the same, sorry, in the same neighborhoods, uh, we were next to each other. Uh, she's been really influential to the culture. She's exposing Colombia to the highest level of music industry. She's doing amazing things, amazing things in the city. So, uh, be and for me, being put up there as the most representative people, persons in Colombia is a big deal to share that spot with with such a, a, a superstar. And uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, the Carnival of Barranquilla. I've heard that this is a huge tradition and yeah. millions of people come here every year, every February or March, or it depends on, it depends yeah. on the date. So uh, what's it like? So basically, Carnival is just a celebration. Uh, we have these traditions of uh, music, culture. We have a lot of African influence. Uh, and then we're just trying to expose, and, and during those days or that month, we're trying to expose our culture or or traditions in during that period of time that we only have, you know, to don't be forget it. Uh, it's a privilege to be in the carnival. Everybody loves it. I, I've not been in a carnival since I left home to go to the United States. And this year, occasionally, the All-Star break, when I was in, in, in United States, the All-Star break was right at the same date. And I was this close to go to the carnival for the first time in eight years, but I couldn't... Uh, a couple issues with the with the move my visa, so I, I didn't want to risk it and just stay home. But it's really important for us because that express what are we in that specific region, Colombia? How are we as a person? And that explains our personalities, our character, and how laid back sometimes we are, <laughs> and how <laughs> and how happy we are. So dancing, uh, singing, dancing, uh, food, singing, party. Food, uh, uh, concerts, it's a really colorful place. They took mm. one avenue, big avenue in Colombia, and it's a big uh, parade, how you say? And then um, they just show different type of music, different type of cultures, different type of like, or really, really roots of us as, as, as barranqui uh, barranquilleros as we are. And uh, okay, let's let's uh, start with the basketball as well. But because uh, basketball is not that popular in Colombia, mm -hmm. it's uh, well, football is the king, of mm -hmm. course. You also traditionally have very good cyclists. For example, Egan Bernal uh, won the Tour de France in mm -hmm. a couple of years before, etc. Baseball is also very popular. Uh, boxing, as far as I know, as well. So, how did you uh, take up basketball? How did you choose, or how did you end up in basketball? I always say I came up basketball by accident. Uh, it was a little. A, a, like a flash, uh, who you call a flyer in, in my gym mm -hmm. about basketball. Me and a group of friends, we always work together since kindergarten, so we know each other and our families know each other for such a long period of time. And uh, we, just, we just were trying to be together. And then uh, we saw that as a chance of like do something together. And of course, my at the, at the beginning I was really bad. I was terrible. Uh, it was just a hobby. Just kind of like a lifestyle, like you know, you do a sports in the, in the uh, high school, but eventually things were escalating, and then um, I start growing up, I start getting better, and now certain people saw um, opportunity for me to 
to be the best and, and, and be one of most representative in, in, in the sports. And then I started taking it serious and then um, things were escalating one more time, one more. Well, uh, I've read a couple of interviews, a couple of articles. Uh, in a way, basketball kind of saved you from the street life, right? Yeah, because I mean, you, were, you were already in that game. Uh, yeah, you, you know, game. growing up in a, in a medium, low, I would say, a social status is, is, is kind of like, it's not bad, but like back in the day, it was kind of like the conflict in between neighborhoods and all this kind of stuff. It was a big deal for like growing up. So I would say basketball saved me, put me in a different path. And, I, and I'm thankful to God for that because I never, never really wanted to be part of that, but it's just what you have to do in order to be safe. It makes sense. So you are 10, 12 years old and you're seeing things that you don't supposed to see. You see people being killed in front of you. You see people, all this kind of stuff. So those kind of things are not good for a teenager. And especially mm -hmm. so things can go either way. And now seeing how far I come and, you know, I, 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 when I step on the side and decide to take a different path, that was a huge thing for me. And also the people who realize my path, they understand that there is an option. I can, like a person like me, could get out of there. So they see me as an inspiration to, you know what, I want to take different decisions. I can do that, what he did. Or I can dedicate myself to something different, like violence is, is not the way for me to be successful. And it's, well, it's good that it brought you here. So, uh, so uh, also you're, you're very tall, you're mm -hmm. extremely tall. And as far as I know, your, your parents are not that tall. So uh, where did you get the height from? And I kind of know the answer, but I want, want you to, to tell, tell this to, to so our basically viewers. Basically, so my, my family is kind of tall. Ah, uh, okay, kind of tall. My mom is like, 5'11", my dad is like 6'3", my, okay. my aunts, they like 5'10", 5'11", 5'9", but my, my uncles are like 6'4", 6'5", like it is in between a five. But um, my grandpas, they were tall. So when, a curious thing about it, uh, back in the day, I never met my grandpa on my dad's side. I never met him, but people say he was big, massive. And, it, and I was like, my dad told me, it's like, that's where you get your height from. And also he had a brother who sadly was killed back in the day. He, they say like, I got his height. And then, um, so back in the day, my grandpa, he was dating. He had a relationship with a famous singer in Colombia. Uh, La Niña Emilia, that's her name. And they did a, a, a little mini series of her life and all this kind of stuff. And there is one episode that, because my dad sent it, those, I, I love to watch those type of things. My dad sent me, he's like, yo, this is uh, about the singer, or whatever. So I start watching it. And there is one episode where they, met, they show the, a scene where they met. It's like, hey, nice to meet you. I'm Pedro Echenique. And they choose the biggest, most <laughs> strongest man just to do the, uh, the interpretation of my grandpa. And I was like, yeah, that was, he was me. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it seems so, it seems so. Yeah. Uh, so uh, back to the basketball, your, your team, uh, when you started playing it uh, like more seriously, your team won four regional championships. You were averaging 30 points and 15 rebounds, yeah. MVP two times in a row, etc. Uh, but uh, your dad wanted you to go to study in Colombia. Yeah. Uh, so how, how did you manage to convince him that you, you have different path for you your know, career? And, and now I understand my dad for sure. I mean, coming from my dad, he never went, he never passed fifth grade. He never went to a university. He never went to, you know, uh, high school. He never do all those type of things. So when you grow up in that aspect, the only way that you see in your life, in your life, to be successful is going and studying. That's that's a main thing for them, uh, and that was a main thing for me. But at the same time, I'm getting these all these offers from come to go, uh, to come to Europe, to go to the United States, to like people that offer me money. My dad was like, "Hold on, like what is all <laughs> this?" Like they at that point we didn't know too much about like basketball or or how big it could be. And now he's like, yeah, like he, he understands now. But back in the day, uh, 
he, the only way he want me to be successful is study. So I remember we received an offer from Barcelona, uh, Cantera, and then uh, they, they offer money, but they don't guarantee my education or anything like that. So he said, okay, what is in the United States? Well, I have to study, I have to graduate. I was like, okay, go, to, go study, go graduate, show me that you graduate, and then you can do whatever you want. So I did that. I became the first generation of my family to ever graduate from college. And that's a big thing for me because that shows my character and that shows my, uh, I achieved something for my dad that he wanted, really wanted me to. And then uh, that made me feel really well. And then now I officially play basketball and he couldn't say anything else. Uh, because, because you have graduated. You exactly, know? yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, in the summer of 2016, you uh, got a visa and boarded a flight to, to Houston. Mm -hmm. uh, what was going through your head at that time? What were, what were your hopes or what were your dreams or what your You know, goals? at this point, I'm, I remember I left. I left with $3 in my pocket. I didn't have no money. But I was really excited for my journey because I know it's like my life was about to change. I was about to experience a different culture. I was about to, you know, I saw many, many American, uh, how you call it, American movies where college and going to parties <laughs> and cheerleaders and all this kind of stuff. And, that, and that, I, that, that has its own you know, appeal. You know right? but like, that was, I was like, I, I can't wait for this. Like, you know what I'm <laughs> but at the same time, I was like, I knew that this is, an opportunity I couldn't throw away. Besides the, all the partying, besides all the kind of stuff, I always was focused on being the best version of myself. And going to JUCO is one of the toughest things I ever did. I ever say, if you go to junior college and you experience that for two years and you go to somewhere else, everything else is easy, like cake. It's, junior college is, is like, we say, you know, like we say in America, it's like for dogs. Like, it's tough, like no everybody can survive to junior college and, and no everybody have the skin to survive to it. So at that point, when I step in Texas, which is one of the biggest states in America, I feel like a grand theft auto five, you know what I'm saying? They, they yeah, me, yeah. Okay? <laughs> so I was looking at those highways and I'm like, Lord, how many, where I am? And I was feeling in a video game, which is crazy. It's like, I've been here in a video game, but uh, you know, you start being conscious of the things that are happening because everything is happening so fast. Like, okay, now I have to practice with the team. Now I have to play AAU. Now, and everything is moving so fast that all, all of a sudden you realize and boom, you're here in Britain. Like, <laughs> but it, it's, it's almost near to impossible to believe that you, uh, as far as I've read, you went to United States without uh, speaking English. That's true. That right? So uh, what, uh, what were the challenges? Especially, well, except for the obvious ones, <laughs> going to United States uh, and not speaking English. I know that uh, in some parts uh, you can uh, you can find a lot of people like talking Spanish mm -hmm. and they can help you, etc. But how difficult it was to to, to not so know I knew, English. So I knew tiny English, just basics, like basics. I knew how to go to the bathroom and how to order the chicken. That's all. <laughs> and then, uh, so I had the privilege and the opportunity to stay with uh, two more Colombians. And we decided to go to the same school. Yeah, Gildon Mendoza and Andres Ibarguen. My brothers. Uh, Gildon Mendoza, he's now playing in Colombia. Andres, he just finished playing with Flamengo. In Brazil. My brothers, yeah, in Brazil. My brothers, I love them. And, you know, I had the chance also, I have, I'm the youngest one of the group. So basically, it's like you. If you go to another country and you kind of do the same thing, you will find people who does the same team and share the same um, goal as you, and you guys become super, super tight. So at that point, I was 17, 18, Andres was 19, and his Yildon was 19. They were in the United States two years before me, so I kind of come in to join the group, and they make my life easier in terms of like they were explaining me things, and those moments where I didn't want to go to practice, they were there for su to support me. Like we kind of went through the pain together. And that's what builds us up how, how we are. And then in the way, we find all the amazing players like Brian Angola, who is playing in, yeah. uh, in Turkey. Uh, together with, I think, uh, Lithuanian and Mindaugas Kuzminskas. Is it Pinar Karsiaka? I think so. Yeah, yeah. So his teammates with a, with a Lithuanian uh, guy from Vilnius, actually. Exactly. So, and then um, I've met Angola, who, which is what, he's three, four years older than me. 
and then uh, he was setting the example for us. And there's Tello, Juan Diego Tello, who is like my mentor, like my big brother. Uh, he plays here, he played in, in Vilnius. And then uh, you, I got Tony Trocha, who was at Texas A&M, who is a big Colombian too. So those players, we became super close and we kind of became a brotherhood. It makes sense? So at that point, when you have that such a strong base of people that really care and we, you guys understand what we're passing through, everything just makes it easier. And then I think one of the toughest things for me was when we split, when they, we went to a different college. I went to Wichita State. And the rest, I think at this point, he went to UT Arlington and Jill Long went to San Angelo State. Mm -hmm. So everybody split and it was like, now it's by myself. So here we go again. But, uh, but at least at that point, you already uh, spoke English. So. Yeah, at that point, yes. I, have, I took as many English classes as you can think. And then um, they translated me, they helped me. But I think, so I'm a sociologist and I'm a psychologist. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the big, biggest things for a human being as you face a new culture, a, a new environment, the process of, of adaptation is way easier or way faster just because the number one source of um, what we need the most in, as a human being is to communicate simple things. And we will learn that super fast. So the, me being the need to speak and to ask for food, to ask to the bathroom, to, you know, to do homework, that develop a part of your brain that help you to develop even faster. So, so uh, how did you, uh, from uh, uh, Trinity Valley Community College, uh, you went to Wichita State. So how did that move happen and uh, how so did you end up there? I, by my freshman year, I was ranked <clears throat> number 60 something in the nation, the best junior college guys. Coming to my sophomore year, I went to, that summer, I went to a Jamboree, which is a camp for the best, the top 100 mm -hmm. players in junior college. At that point, I was ranked 62. And then uh, I went to the Jamboree and I, I kill it. I play really well. I get the focus of 50 plus college. Um, I have to go to Wichita, Kansas. So Andres, at the point, he has a girlfriend that she was from Wichita, Kansas, where the school was. So prior to that, to that jamboree, the last December of my freshman year, we went to Wichita to spend Christmas with her family. And then we passed in front of the school. It's like, hey, what school is that? It's Wichita State. And I swear, that will sound crazy. I just fell in love with just seeing the school. And I was like, I want to come here. And I didn't even have an offer. So by the end of my freshman year, I received an offer. And when I went to the Jamboree, I have to go back to Wichita, Kansas and play. And then uh, I, so we have to take an eight hour drive. And on the way back, my head coach phone was just blowing out. School's calling, hey, we want big universities, middle high major, Baylor, TCU, Texas A&M, uh, Illinois, can, uh, a school that you ever think. And I took two official visits to Western Kentucky, and I took one visit to Wichita State. And as soon as I got to the campus, I just fell in love with the school. I fell in love with the coaches. Uh, had a great coach, Greg Marshall, and then, uh, he, he's one of the, you know, big inspiration for me to be who I am today. And uh, what, what were the main differences? Uh, well, you kind of went to the higher level, so how difficult was to adapt or was, wasn't it difficult at all? It was difficult, especially. And I, and I know the trainings were hard as well, right? Yeah, I mean, the level of physicality, like the level, how much you run, like I was struggling at first. I could not get in shape. I don't know why. I had, I, at that point, my heart was a little bigger. I had like something going on with my heart. So we thought that that could be an issue. You know, my heart was good. It was just taking a little bit longer for me to get in shape and to be at the level. But eventually things started just falling off on point and I became a really good, I became to the starting lineup. But I remember I was weighing 95 pounds and when I get there, 100 or something, 95 or 100. And by the end of the summer, I was weighing like 110. Like Kilo, kilograms. Kilograms, yeah. yeah. not pounds, because 95 so, pounds is no, 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 very no, no, little. No, it's, it's little. So 95, 95, uh, 95 kilograms, and by the end I was 110, so I was like big. 
but I was too slow. So it was a process of adaptation. By my second year, I already had my way and everything just built up the speed. So it went really well for me. And so um, you have finished your college career in 2020. Uh, what were the options then after the college? So by the end of my senior year, I was putting double doubles. I was putting 20 and 10, 15 and 15. Like I was calling up the attention of a lot of NBA teams. Like who's this guy, how can he play? So for me it was just like, they told me it's like, just go to the NCAA tournament and everything's gonna be set easier. I was like, okay. But so I keep going, but sadly pandemic year comes yeah. in. I think that, that was a weird year for us in terms of like with many players, we don't know what to do. So for me as a non-prospect, and when I say non-prospect, yeah, people know me, but they know me for just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that draft, I feel like was based on like the reputation of certain guys and, you know, the high likes or something yeah, yeah. just because longevity. Like I just come to the United States at that point four years ago. Yeah. And, and they've been watching those guys since they were since in they are, middle school. I, yeah, <laughs> since we're in middle school. So for me, it was like I have to sh keep showing what I'm capable of. So me and my agents, we said, you know what? We can have two options right now. You, you can go to, uh, what was it? You can go to Japan, Japan. Japan, okay. Or you can go to Spain. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, kind of, you kind of know the language, right? Yeah, the no, like, yeah. <laughs> but at that point, you are so focused on the, your NBA dream that you, you don't want to live. Yeah, yeah. Because you, t you think that that's going to save you like a, a step away from your, from your dream. And well, somehow all my agents, uh, you know, my agents convinced me, this is going to be good. You're going to be at the ACV. This is a good, really good league. So you're just going to go and play there. I was like, okay, let's do it. So I went to San Sebastian, ACB, first time. Uh, had good teammates. I mean, we were at the bottom of the table because my team went from Lep Oro to, mm -hmm, ACB. to ACB. So, but I was killing the league. Like I was putting double down. I was playing against Real Madrid, Eddie Tavares, which is one of my greatest friends now, and my mentor and my big brother. Uh, it was my first game was against Real Madrid, and I'm like, oh Lord, like, you know, he's at such an historic- Actually, actually, that's, the, that's my next question. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah. So yeah, like the first time I, I go to play, I, get, I play against Real Madrid, Facu Campasso, um, Felipe Reyes, uh, many like legends of Europe that you know, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it was in shock. Like, uh, I played against Uzma Garuba, which is mm -hmm. and now is my friend. And then, uh, you know, that, that first impact, it was like, oh Lord, like, and then I start playing really well, like against Real Madrid. I was doing pretty good for my team, and it just things just start building up. But uh, just after the new year, uh, you have suffered a knee injury, yeah, with, with, uh, which had set you back for four months or so. So yeah. So what 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 was it like? Was it because you were? I, I saw the stats. I <laughs> I didn't watch the games, unfortunately, yeah. but I saw the stats. You were doing very well at that point. Yeah. So I felt like. I can't lie to you, the draft night, the draft that year was like, that year was like in November, December, something crazy like that. So me putting the, those numbers, it was like, I'm coming back to the United States, I'm gonna get drafted. So my agent was like, hey, we have this chance from this, 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 these teams, they wanna call you late round. And I was like, okay, let's do it. Like, I want to hear my name called. Like, this is a dream for me. And I'm this close. And you go to draft night, just watch all the picks, and you don't get picked. And it's like, it, it was really disappointing for me because I feel like I was doing everything that I could possibly do to be part of that. But now I see I have a different mentality about it. And it actually was one of the best things that happens because I finished the season, I got her just because how stressed I was, and that, that uh, injury kind of settled me down to understand many things in my life, and for me to keep going, keep motivating, and now find a different path, it really helped me to build everything that I built on the last two years. 
So uh, after the season, uh, you went to Summer League, mm -hmm. uh, but were there any other options, like any, any other uh, European teams were interested in you? Or yes. Did, did, did it, uh, were there any like serious offers from Yes, yeah, so I had a, I don't remember which teams, but I have a couple, like many offers from France, from Spain and from, uh, and I don't remember the other country, but they were like, hey, we want him, we want to come back to Europe. But for me, it was like, I need to ch try this. I mean, I cannot live with this taste in my mouth. Like, I need to see what is up there. So we decided to go summer league. They offered me training camp deal. I went to training camp deal and then I get assigned to the G League and I did an amazing year. I get called up in December, become the first Colombian ever, and then, uh, you know, things went well. So, yeah, uh, let's, uh, well, this, this, this needs more explanation and <laughs> more talking about. So, uh, tell us more about the morning of 29th of December, uh, 2021, <sighs> and the call you have received. How did the, that part of the day and the rest of the day go? So, I'm going to say, so that we have a, this is what happened. So, we had... COVID is spreading up, teams are getting uh, sick, whatever. And qu quarantines and yeah, stuff quarantines, like that. Yeah, quarantines, all this kind of stuff. So <clears throat> I know it was coming because it was like, I'm putting this number. This is impossible for me to happen. Come on. And sadly, in, in, in United States, the GLA has something called the showcase, which is in Vegas at the middle of the mm -hmm. year in December. And just for teams to go watch you, you know, so I play really good that showcase, but the last game I twist, I sprained my ankle really, really bad. So I was out for a week, week and a half. So I knew something was going on because my agent called me. It's like, how are you? How are you feeling? Like it's like, <laughs> hold on, are you tell you want to tell me something? Like I can tape it up and go. But my ankle was a little bit bad, so they let me go home, and I come back. And as soon as I got back, the whistles were like. We need to get him healthy. We need him. So I was doing double sessions of rehab, treatment, like just slow down, whatever, just to be able to, you know, practice. And one of the craziest things is like, okay, I get healthy. I start practicing with the team. And, but the call didn't happen. I was like, I remember the 28th, I, I lay down on my, on my bed and I was like, you know, God, if it's happening, it's going to happen. So. I'm not gonna stress about, I know what is your call for me to be this who I am today. And I just don't gonna freak out. So it doesn't happen, it's good. And if it's happening, it will be amazing, but I will lead everything into you and I'm just don't gonna question your way. The next morning I wake up and I have rehab at 9.30, but normally I go to the gym an hour earlier. And that day I decide to sleep a little bit longer. <laughs> Normally, I wake up at 7.30. That day, I will, you know what? I'm going to wake up at 8.15, so I keep sleeping. When I turn, pick up my phone, I have found like 20 missed calls. And I was like, hold on, what's going on? And one of the calls was the GM from the G League team and one from the, my head coach and one from the GM at the time of the Wizards, Tommy Shepard. And I was like, okay, it's happening. <laughs> so I called, it's like, yeah, Jamie, we need you. You're going to be signed to a 10-day. And I was like, but you need to get to the gym now. Normally, it takes me like 15 minutes to get to the gym. That day took me five minutes. I just speed up all day. And in the way, I come, I, the first person I think I call, it, it was my dad. And I was like, I remember the conversation like it was yesterday. It's like, hey, how are you sitting? What are you doing right now? It's like, I'm driving. I'm going, you know, my, my dad is still yeah, a, a driver. driver yeah. yeah. So are you sitting down? And I was like, yeah, what happened? So like, well, I just got called up. And he started crying. I started crying. And, it was a really exciting moment just because, you know, that's a moment to, to enjoy, to appreciate. And you, um, it was against Cavaliers, Cavaliers, right? yeah. Cavaliers, uh, you spent three minutes on floor. So how, how was it? How, how was the game itself? Ah, it's just a regular game. I think I have, once I'm in the game, I don't worry about too many things. After the games, I realize what I did. And now it's like, but for me, it was more than that. It was like, yeah, I think I'm excited for what it means, not for me. Oh, obviously, yes, for me, but what it means for a country, for a continent, for like being a Colombia who plays in the NBA has a lot of like, it's a powerful thing to say. So for me, it, I'm being 
next to superstars all summer long. I've been working out with everybody. It's just for me, it's like, this is what I want to do and this is the spot that I think I deserve because how much I work and how much thing, how much I put into it. So I wasn't surprised. I'm not like a whole little kid. Yes, it, it, it means a lot because that's my dream come true. But I was super in the moment. Like I was like, okay, run the court, like anything. That, and then after that, I was like, now the emotions or, you know, things that happen in is like, okay, this is a big thing for me and I'm never going to forget this moment. And, uh, and the aftermath was also impressive. I've, uh, I've read that you uh, had a, uh, you were called to uh, Colombian Embassy yeah. to, to be honored there. And when you came back that after, after the season, when you landed in, in Colombia, there were like 20 something journalists. So Yeah, every time I go to Colombia, it's a little crazy <laughs> just because, uh, uh, you know, people is proud of want to know what I'm doing. And I think this last year, I wouldn't say, ne it's never about a year, it's a year of learning. And this last year, I have to be trade up. Uh, things maybe didn't go in the way that we were, me and my agents were planning. So you have to find different ways to be successful. And then uh, I, injuries happening, I sprained both of my ankles, I broke my hand. So I was, I, I felt like I couldn't, I couldn't um, perform at my highest level. And when I was at my highest level, always something happened. So that was a huge call up for me to, okay, we need to do something different. And that's why I'm here. And uh, with, uh, also back to that, that season, you uh, went to the conference semifinals with Capital City mm -hmm. Go-Go. And uh, a bit of trivia, I don't know if you know, but uh, the, that season G League was won by Rio Grande Valley Vipers. Mm -hmm. And you know who was on the, on the team? Marcus Foster. Marcus Foster was there. So, do you remember him from, from G League as well? No, I, I, his name, when I signed and they told me that, that who is the American were, Marcus Foster, I was like, I know that name for somewhere. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, I, but I couldn't remember. And all of a sudden we got here and we have dinner the other day and we have like 10 close friends in common. Like a lot of people, that, that I know know him and a lot of people he knows know me. <laughs> so it was the same, the same way with, with the other Americans. It's like, I know him for somewhere, but I'm like, I don't know. So uh, also in uh, 2022, on the 26th of August, 2022, you made your debut with a Colombian national basketball mm -hmm. team. So uh, what, what was it like? Was it another one of your dreams coming true? Yeah, it, 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 like, I mean, I never had the chance to play with the national team just because it's always on calendar for me mm -hmm. doing something. And it was the perfect chance for me to the entire group of Colombians to be finally together. And Andres was there, Gildon was there, Tony was there, Angola was there, Teo was there. So it was, a, it was I have videos on my phone <laughs> of like, it, it was in, in the, the training camp was on my city. So it was amazing. Like they were coming to my house, they were meeting my mom. <laughs> Like they were spending time with my family and it was such an amazing, amazing thing just to share where you're from with, your, you know, with the people that you love. So it was an amazing chance for me to finally put the Colombian flag and Colombian name in my chest and, and play in front of my um, hometown, play in front of my people, play in front of my parents. It was, it, I was nervous, really, really <laughs> nervous, but I think things went well, my participation in there. Uh, at the beginning, it was a, 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 like a process of adaptation to the team. It's a team that has been together for five plus years, mm -hmm. and I'm the new guy. I'm just as well as he, so I have to understand what was my role. And eventually, things were improving and getting better. And now I go to America Cup, and we did a really good debut in, in there. So I, f I felt pretty confident in what I built there. And the, in, the, uh, in the national team, you've met another player who is very well known in Lithuania and who's well known to Rita's fans because he's, well, I wouldn't say he's a bit of a legend, but he is. So uh, how, how, um, how did you meet uh, Juan Palacios? And is, is he still that good, good of a guy that I've heard about? <laughs> I mean, Te Te yes, like Tejo is, is like my big brother. He's such a person that from when, when I was 18, he welcomed me like a little little brother and he always advised me, always give me like, you know, he always wished me the best. And then having such a big figure, I wanted to be like him. Now he's my teammate. Now he's my, my friend. 
that I can pick up the phone and hey, I'm passing through this and he will find ways to help me. That's an amazing thing. He, man, I, I know he was good. And when we were in training, I was like, he's like 37, 36. Yeah. And I was like, man, he still got it. He was hitting jump shots, all this kind of stuff. And I was like, yeah, that, that guy is, he, he's that guy. And, and I, I've been, I, I was told that uh, at first you didn't inform him uh, you were coming to read us. Yeah. <laughs> so how did that uh, so call we, or talk so or chat went? All these things, me coming to, to read us was really fast. Yeah. Like, I, all of a sudden, the week before I was in Spain, I was doing a treatment for my knees. I was like, you know, uh, getting preparing my body to what I was about to go through uh, my, my summer. And all of a sudden, I received a call. It's like, hey, we have an offer from this team and read us. Uh, okay. <laughs> and then we're going to wait on the other day. What's going to be like? So just be prepared. It's like, do you want it? I was like, yeah, okay, let's, I want it. It's early in the summer. I can go play. I want to keep playing because I wasn't able to play. So, so I go play. Uh, so the day goes by, say, hey, Rita is really interested. They want to bring you in. The big man just got hurt, so you're going to replace him. And I was like, we, I'm going to find further details later on. I was like, okay, I was working out. So the next day comes, I'm working out in the morning. I left my phone, and my agent called me. She, he calls my mom. He's like, hey, I need to tell to him. He's like, okay, I'm going to put. So she called me. I was like, hey, this is the deal. They sent me the contract. I signed it. And I put my phone, and I keep working out for like two more hours. And I was working out, and all of a sudden, things come out. And then I find like five missed calls from him. <laughs> it was like, yo, so at least Brian told me that he was about to play in a team that I play. He was asking me like, but you, I was expecting this from you, but I wasn't not expecting this from you. I could expect it for someone else, but not for you. How you didn't tell me? It was like, yo, I'm working out. It just happened. Like literally he just happened in 48 hours. So it was like, yeah, I have people here there for you. They can help you whatever you need. It was like perfect. Like, and we started connecting. He was telling me, like, you would love it there. Hey, great city. So that, that was the conversation. But he was, he was, he was a little mad. <laughs> but just a little bit. Just a little <laughs> bit. I called him yesterday, or the day before, asking me about some stuff about the city. And he told me, yeah, you can go here, here. I was like, perfect. And, you know, th there's another very, uh, well, not very, a little bit weird story uh, that connects Juan with, uh, uh, with, with Vilnius as well. At some point, mm -hmm. uh, he brought a couple of his childhood friends or teenage friends to work here as barbers. And one of them is doing my beard for the last seven years. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that, that's also the connection. So uh, uh, when the next time you're talking to Juan, just say that uh, Hamilton is doing still very good. Well, I was just with Hamilton right now. <laughs> yeah, was, yeah, yeah really? So he told me, he, I just found out that story that he brought a couple of friends that they barbers right now. And he connects me with them. That's what I was like a little bit late to it because he was like, I went to Hamilton and we were talking and we were, you know. And he, he told me Hamilton is 40, but he looked like 27. He yeah, looked like I, I, I can never believe yeah, him. He told me, oh, I'm 40. And I was like, <laughs> you are not 40. He looks like my age. <laughs> he was like, no, you kidding me. Yeah, I'm 40. I was like, Lord. So, yeah, and you're here. You're in Vilnius. So um, uh, what should we expect uh, from you and uh, those six weeks, <laughs> only six weeks left till the end, even the end of the playoffs. So what, to, what, what you're bringing to the team? I bring, uh, I think I'm going to give it all. I'm going to give all my energy, all my passion. Um, you're always going to see me with a big smile. And if I uh, will try to help the team as much as I can, uh, you know, I'm just going to be me. I'm always going to be myself. I'm going to be, and I think so far it's been attractive to the team, like what I bring in. A lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm to be here, and then um, just interact. Like people can see me in the street. Don't be afraid. I, I'm super friendly. I look a little bit intimidating, <laughs> but it's, it's just my face. I'm a really super chill guy. Like easy to talk to. Um, the best can expect. The, always every night nice being intense, and you know, I, this is a, being being here is a privilege. This team is like a historic club, club. So. This is like uh, something that I have to take very serious, and that's why I'm here because they know the professionalism that, that has a mark on, on me. So I'm really excited and really thankful for this chance, and you know, go read this. And uh, we can expect better 
free throw shooting from you. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't know what's happening, but I'm figuring out why I'm missing free throws. Because, like, if you see my career, it's like yeah. 85, 86, 80. And I was like, that day, I was like, how I'm missing. I never, on my 25 years old, which I'm going to turn 26 in. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. The birthday is in two days since we're talking. In, in two days. Uh, in my 25 years, almost 26, I never miss four free throws in a row. <laughs> never. And that's a thing that is on my mind. That that's what I was like. I'm coming early today. I'm going to shoot 100 free throws and I'm gonna, not going to miss a free throw anymore. So, yeah. Uh, thanks thanks for, the, for the interview. Thanks for your smile. And uh, good luck with the, with the rest of the, Thank you guys. Of Thank the you season. Guys. Thank you.